We're going to be looking at how to manipulate and clean your data, right? Using the DeepIR package, it comes with the Tidyverse. It's pretty easy, it's quite intuitive. I'm going to walk you through this very carefully and slowly. You're going to learn a couple of functions. It's going to be a lot of fun, so stick with me. Let's do this. Boom shakalaka. Just to walk you through what you're looking at right now, I am going to walk you through a little bit of code for each of these functions. And uh, you can see the output of the code at the bottom. You can see the code at the top. I'm going to tell you at the end of the video how to get access to this exact document. And you can also copy the code and paste it into um, RStudio and, and replicate what I'm doing. All of the data that I use in any of my tutorials is data that's built into R or comes with packages. So you can literally do everything that I'm doing. You will have this data and you can replicate what I'm doing here. Also on the right hand side here, you see there's these little annotations. If you hover over them, you get a little bit of an explanatory note um, about that particular line of code. Okay, so having said all of that, let's dive right in. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Just firstly, what is a package? Packages expand the vocabulary of R, right? The, the functions that you have available to you. And sometimes actually they come with data as well, as in the cases that we're going to look at right now. Okay, how do you install packages? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Install packages, the name of the package, it comes for free once you've installed it, once you've got it forever. And when you install it, you've got to have the inverted commas over there. If you install the tidyverse, that actually comes with a packet of packages, right? Dplyr, ggplot, a whole lot of packages, right? So this is a good way to start. If we say view Star Wars, Star Wars is a data set that comes with uh, the Tidyverse. And this is the data set that we're gonna have a look at in this tutorial. So if we looked at this data set, we might decide, look, we don't wanna use all of the variables. We wanna just select a few of them, right? And so we might want name, right? In our data set, we might want species, and we might want any variable that has the word color in it. So the hair color, skin color, eye color. So these are the variables we want in the data set that we're gonna analyze. How do we get that? How do we clean our data so that we have just those variables in a final data set? Let's look at how to do that. And look at how easy it is to do that. Let us let me walk you through the process and you're gonna absolutely love this. We start with Star Wars, right? That's the data set we're looking at. This is a data object, right? Star Wars, it's a data frame. Then this little uh, percent, greater than percent. It's what we call a pipe operator. So it takes whatever object you've got and pipes it into the next line of code. And that's very useful because we can get lots of things done. And you'll see as we do this, how useful it is. Then we use the function select. And this is what I love about dplyr and all of the tidyverse packages is they use very human-like syntax, right? This is uh, natural language. We wanna select, so we use the word select. We don't have to do any fancy coding. And we simply list the names of the variables that we want to include in our data set, in this case, name, species. Now here's a little trick. You can also say contains, and that's a new function inside a function, and the word color, and then I'm piping that into a new function here called head, and that just means I only want to see the first 10 rows of that data set. And you can see I've got these little annotations here that explain the head function will ensure that you only see the first 10 functions, 10 rows of data. If we change that 10 to five, it would be five rows of data. You can understand that. Now, the other thing is you, we've said here contains color. You can see in the output down here that we've got name, species, and then any variable that has color. And then that's all we've got. So it's limited our data set to those variables. This little sub function here contains color. There's other sub functions like that. And I'm gonna hit this annotation here so you can see, uh, so you can see exactly what I mean. Other helper functions include, starts with, ends with, all of, any of, one of everything, number range and matches. So I'm not gonna get into all of that in this video, but the point is this tidy select, that there's this way of selecting what you want in a very clever way. And if you're dealing with big data sets, that's extremely, extremely useful. Now let's go back to our, the Star Wars data set. Let's say for example, uh, we, had, uh, we didn't want all of the rows. So we've just talked about select, which helps you decide on which, uh, which columns you want, which variables you want, but we might not want all of the rows, we might want a very particular subset of those rows. We might want to filter for rows that meet specific criteria, right? How do we do that? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, let's take a look. Let's imagine, for example, that we only wanted uh, characters. These are all Star Wars characters. We only want characters that are, uh, that are human. So there's humans and droids. So we only wanted humans. We only wanted humans whose height was less than 200 centimeters. And let's say, for example, we only wanted humans with sort of blue or brown eyes. So there's three things here. They have to be a human. 
They have to have a height less than 200. And then with respect to eye color, they can either have blue or brown eyes. Let's look at how to do that. Let's look at the code that gets us to where we wanna be. And if you have a look at the output of this code down here, you can see we've gotten exactly that. All of these rows of data, uh, all are human. They all have a height of less than 200 and they all have either brown or blue eyes. So that's quite important. So we've got three criteria, right? Species has to be met and height must be met and eye color must be met. But within eye color, there's two possible options. So there's an or, either blue or brown. Let's have a look at how we do that in the code over here, right? We've said Star Wars, select, we've just talked about. We've got name, height, species, eye color, happy days. We've got a smaller contracted set of variables, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now this is where it's interesting. We've got filter. So filter is what basically uh, cuts down the number of rows against a certain set of criteria. Here are those criteria. Species equals human. Now we've got a double equals here. And let me just explain why it is a double equals and not a single equals. If it was a single equals, we would be making a statement to R that this does equal to that. And that's not what we're doing. We're saying, we're asking R to create a logical vector. So where species equals double equals, asks the question for any particular observational row, is it the case that the species variable has a value of human? So this is like a question. Is it the case true or false? If it's true, then include that particular observation in our final data set. Okay, so we're not stating that species equals human, we set, we're asking the question, does species equal human for this particular observation? And if that is true, keep that particular observation or that row of data, okay? Not too complicated, just remember always double equals when you're doing a filter. Then uh, height is less than 200, easy. And then this little ampersand, by the way, is and. So we want this criteria and that criteria and eye color must also be met. But for eye color, we've said this little in allows us to say eye color must be found in and we've got a, the C is a concatenation and we can list a number of possible options here. We've just got blue or brown, but you could have many, many, many. This is why I like this way of doing your ors. You, you could do multiple filters with this or that or that and instead of the ampersand, you put a vertical line equals or, or you can have multiple filter, multiple lines of using the function filter. It gets a little bit messy. This is much neater. Okay, so easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We've got a lovely output here with code that's quite simple and easy to read. Back to our original data set. We've noticed that the height variable is in centimeters. And we might say, well, we actually want this to be in meters, right? So how do we do that? We use the mutate function. And mutate, as you can imagine, means change. Let's have a look at the code over here. Uh, we start with Star Wars, pipe it into select, happy days, then here, mutate. Now, when you say mutate, the first argument, so the very first thing that you have over here is saying, what is it that you want to either change or, or create? Here we've said height, and height is an existing variable. So it's we're basically saying to R, whatever is at the moment in the variable height, we want you to overwrite that with this new information that we're providing. If we said height underscore two or something, it would simply create another variable called height two, and it would leave the original height variable as it is, okay? And that is sometimes a useful thing to do, but we're gonna overwrite height with our new set of instructions. So we say height equals, and here we simply say height divided by 100 to change it from centimeters into meters, pipe that into head, and we can have a look at that. And it does exactly what we expect here, 1.72 meters instead of 172 centimeters, okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, boom shakalaka, let's keep going. Now I'm gonna introduce you to a different data set. Again, this is data that you have on your computer so you can replicate everything I'm doing at home. This is the M sleep or mammals sleep data set. Also a lovely data set to practice with. Let's say for example, in this data set, we wanted to arrange our data uh, by this sleep total. Right, so this is all about mammals and how much they sleep. So at the moment, they're in whatever order they are. I don't know how they're ordered at the moment, but we might wanna say, uh, arrange this by sleep total. Well, in the tidyverse and with deep power, it is exactly as simple as you can imagine. We use the arrange function and here we go. Let's walk through it. Sleep, pipe that into select. We select a few variables and then we say, arrange sleep total. And if you look at the output down here, it's gone from smallest to largest, we've only got 10 observations here, but it would carry on. So you can see we've arranged all of the data by the value in sleep total. If we put a minus in front of sleep total, it would do it the other way around. It would start with the highest amount of sleep and go down from there. If this was a, a categorical variable, you know, like categorical variable, like eye color, you know, brown, blue, orange, or whatever, orange eyes, I don't know. 
then it would arrange them uh, alphabetically by that particular variable. Okay, not complicated. You can do this. Let's keep going. Back to our Star Wars data set. Let's say we've got this variable here called species. And you notice that it's humans and droids and uh, there's, you know, there's a couple of others. Let's say, for example, we didn't like uh, the word droid, but we'd prefer droid to be robot. We want to change or recode that particular variable. It is as easy as it sounds. Let's have a look at how to do that using the dplyr package. And that's right, we use the a recode function. Uh, there's a couple of things to note here, though. So I'm going to walk you through this, um, but it's not complicated. The beginning of the code, super duper easy, Star Wars, pipe it into select. We've got a couple of variables. Um, again, I've said contained color here. It doesn't really matter. Pipe that into. Now, here's where the recoding works. We start with mutate because mutate means change, right? So we mutate. We're going to mutate the species variable. So you could create a new variable, but we're going to overwrite the existing species variable. And what that's going to equal to is now we use the recode function, recode. The first argument has to again be species. And the reason is it, it's not taken for granted that, we, that we're just going to overwrite the existing species variable. We may have uh, called this something else, species2, for example, in which case, of course, you need to tell R what it is that it needs to use to populate this new variable. But in this case, we're overwriting the existing variable. So recode species, that's where it fetches the data. And then you just simply say droid now equals robot. And boom shakalaka uh, here, here, let's have a look. Uh, eye color species. Uh, we've got human, robot, robot, human, 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 robot. So it's done exactly what we asked it to. Happy days. Now I'm going to talk about one of, I think, one of the most powerful features in the DeepLyR package, and that is how to use group by and summarize uh, to create a summary table of certain aspects of your data. It's This is like, so pay attention, you're going to love this. Let's say, for example, we wanted to take our data and we've got a variable here called sex and we've got males and females. And we've also got some observations that are none and there's probably a few NAs in there as well. So we might want to say we only want observations where the sex variable is either male or female. That's our starting point. And we might want to say, can we compare the average height of males to the average height of females um, and create a little table that said males have an average height of this and females have an average height of that. And we could see who was taller. Okay, let's have a look at how to do that using the dplyr package. Okay, so before we look at the code, just look at the output that I've got at the bottom, just to prove that we've gotten to exactly what we wanted. We've got females have an average height of 1.72. Oh, and we, in this case, I've also done average mass and an average mass of uh, 54. Uh, males 1.78 and an average mass of 80, right? So men are taller and heavier than women. Okay, in this particular data set, you'd expect that. Happy days. Let's talk about how to get there. It's not difficult. Let me walk you through the code. Right, first of all, Star Wars, select sex, mass, and height. Fine, we ha happy days. Then filter. Here we said for the sex variable, we just want uh, males and females. I don't want the none and the NAs, et cetera, et cetera. So I've just sort of said sex. Remember we talked about use the double equals because we're creating a logical vector. Is this true or not? That this particular observation uh, has a value of male for sex. Yes, it does. Or, and remember I said that you can use a downward slash for or, I'm just illustrating that here, or sex is equal to female. So if either of these two criteria are met, that particular row will be included in our data set. Happy days. Now, we've spoken about mutate and I'm just here converting height in, from centimeters into meters by dividing by 100, easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm saying drop NA. Drop NA means not available. In other words, it's missing data. So I'm just sort of saying in this data set, remove any missing values. It might be the case that for some of the height and some of the mass observations, the data is just not there. And we want to just get rid of those particular observations. It's quite important to do the drop NA at a point in your code where you know you're dealing with the sort of subset that you're interested in. If you drop your missing values too early, you'll be dropping missing values because of missing values in other variables that you haven't selected for and it can get a bit messy, but we'll talk about that in another video. Now, here's where things get useful. We say group by sex, right? So we've got all of this data and we're saying, uh, take all of this data and put it into two groups because we've, well, it would be more than, you're not saying two groups, but in this case, we've only got two possible values, male or female. If there were other values, it would group by all of them. Take the data, put it into these groups, and then create me, summarize. So create me a summary table. And when you create the summary table, we say average height. So it's going to create a column for average height, which is going to have in it 
for each of these two groups, the mean of height, which is the average of height, and create a variable or a column called average mass. And in it, you'll populate it with the mean or the average of mass. And boom shakalaka, that's exactly what it's done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. If you want to have access to this particular sheet that I'm looking at at the moment, that's got all of these little annotations that you're gonna find useful, and you can copy the code and practice at home, click on the link that is on the screen at the moment. That'll give you access. You, you know, you can download all of this. Um, I hope you found this useful. Don't do drugs, always do your best. Don't ever change. Speak to you soon. Take care, bye.